name is Jim, and we're going to be talking about this Fluke Multimeter today on Flumanjaro. This is the Fluke Model 101 Pocket Multimeter. You may have guessed from the model designation that this is the most basic multimeter that Fluke makes. It's also the smallest, which can be quite convenient, and it's also the cheapest. I paid just $40 up for this, and I got it from Amazon. Now, there's a bit of a caveat to that, and I'll get to that in a, a couple minutes here. So what do you get for that money? Well, you don't get a whole lot. You just get the multimeter itself. You get a, a set of probes. On the probes, you get a couple caps here. Now, I originally thought that these were, uh, you know, just to protect the probes when you're not using them, but they're really to prevent you from accidentally hitting things if you're in a busy circuit panel or something. They protect the whole length of the, the lead and only expose a tiny little bit at the front there. Now, I don't find that super useful. I'm not usually probing around in a, a big panel that I'm worried about shorting things out. And so I'm probably just going to take these off and promptly lose them, but they are there if you need them. Now these are Cat3 600 volt rated probes, um, and they aren't the nicest probes that Fluke has. The, the wires are just kind of typical wires. They're not nice silicone wires, so there's, you know, they get kinks in them and stuff. It's not the nicest set, but not uh, surprising for the price point that this is at. In the box, all you get is this, they call it a safety manual. And I was first excited that there might actually be some useful information based on how thick this is. However, manual is only this many pages in English. All these other pages are all just different languages. And that was kind of the first hint that this, there might be something unusual about this meter. The other hint is just the number of different languages that are on the box and the inexpensive price on it. So with all those things combined, um, it would seem that this is probably not a multimeter that Fluke intends to sell in the U.S. It, it seems like it's probably a gray market multimeter that they intend to sell worldwide and don't sell in the U.S., but that somebody has imported a whole bunch of them and seem to be selling on Amazon for very inexpensive. So that being said, they do seem to support this. It does seem to be a genuine Fluke multimeter. It doesn't seem to be a knockoff. It's got this fancy hologram on it, which that alone I wouldn't put too much stock in, but the quality of the meter is extremely high. I can't see another company, if they're trying to make a copycat of it, going to this length to um, make such a high quality meter. If they are, they should be branding them under their own names because this is really an excellent quality meter. And I'll get to that in a little bit here. So it is possible that this is a, a gray market that's called uh, multimeter. Fluke does seem to support it. Um, if you go on their website and ask their little chat bot if it's supported, they say that it is. So it's quite possible that if you have an issue with it, they'll still honor the warranty claim. If not, however, it's only a $40 multimeter. It's not the end of the world if it ends up breaking on you or something. I came across this multimeter because I was looking for another multimeter to have that I could use in the shop or in the garage that would be small and only have the basic functions that I needed. However, I really wanted it to be of high quality and to be accurate. For test equipment like this, there's nothing worse than going to measure something, thinking it says one thing because that's what your instrument told you, but to later find out that that was wrong because either your instrument wasn't working properly or it had failed or it just you know, wasn't a very good meter to begin with. That can get you hurt if you're measuring, you know, high voltage. Otherwise, it can just be very frustrating if you're trying to figure out that, you know, your connection isn't working properly, but it's not that it, the connection is broken, it's that your meter is broken. So I wanted something that was very high quality, and so that's why I was looking at fluke, fluke multimeters. Now, I didn't need all the bells and whistles, because all I wanted to do down here is measure voltage, measure resistance, maybe check a capacitor if I needed it, and that's all this meter does. If I need other things, I've got a bigger multimeter. You'll see that in a little bit for all the bells and whistles that that has on it. So this multimeter has just kind of the basic functionalities. It has AC and DC voltage, millivolts, resistance, continuity, which is a big thing I really like, um, and then capacitance, and it'll also measure the frequency of an AC circuit. Those are all the features that I really want. The only thing that this is missing that I would like to have is a backlight on it. But for the price point, it's not too surprising. As I mentioned, the build quality on it is extremely good. It's powered by two uh, AA batteries in the back. I'm sorry, AAA batteries in the back. There's not much else to it. It's got a little lanyard strap on the top, but there's nothing there. You can get a case for this if you want it, but that just adds more bulk to it. I don't think it's really necessary. One thing that's unusual on this is the probes actually go in the bottom of it. Most fluke meters, they go in the front. Um, and the big thing that it's lacking is it doesn't measure, measure amps. So that's kind of the, the next step up. The 107 model that they do sell in the U.S. measures amps as well. But I don't usually need that for most things. And if so, I have another multimeter that I, I can use for that. Let's go through the different functions and see how well they work on here. Now, this meter is not supposed to be the most accurate meter in the world. It's not meant to. It's not the most expensive one. It says that its DC accuracy is to the nearest half a percent. 
which is still going to be way more than you need for anything else. And I'd like to measure that, but to do that I'd really need some precision calibrated standards for that sort of thing, which I don't have, and I don't think is necessary for this type of meter. If you're going to be looking for the nearest, you know, 0.01% accurate meter, a $40 meter is not what you're going to be using for that. You really just want to be knowing, you know, is, is it 120 volts or is it 5 volts, that sort of thing. So to, to compare these, I'm actually going to be using my big fluke here. This is a fluke 189. This was a very nice meter. Uh, it was calibrated to be accurate to 0.025% for DC voltage when it was new, but it's not new anymore. I haven't had it calibrated in you know, 10 years or so, so who knows how accurate it is now. But we'll just get you know kind of a, a ballpark to make sure that everything is in the same range, and that should be good enough for this type of meter here. So first let's measure AC voltage. So I've got them both set to AC voltage here. We'll measure on the big fluke here first. This is just an outlet coming out of the wall here and it should read about 120 volts. So this reads 119.25 volts. And on the little fluke here, we got 120.1 volts. So they're off by a little bit, but that's less than a percent, and that should be perfectly fine. And like I said, there's no way to know if this one is actually right or not. My assumption is that it is, but there's no way to know. So next up for DC voltage here, I've just got a cheap DC power supply. So this says on the front that it's putting out 10 volts. Uh, let's verify that first with the, the big fluke here. Switch it to DC voltage, always helps. And it says 9.98, so that's pretty good. And then on the little one, switch it to DC voltage. And it says 9.98, exactly the same. So all these kind of read the same. It's a good sign that this is reading right here. Next up, let's check resistance. So I've got two different resistors here. I've got a big, I think this is a 30 watt, uh, very low ohm resistor. And then over here, I've got a little quarter ohm resistor that I think it's around 100 kilo ohms. So let's measure it with the fluke first, the small fluke over here. And that's 91.9, 90.9 kilo ohms. And then on this one here, that's about 88.8. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Like I said, it could just be that this one has been more recently calibrated. On the big resistor here, this is reading 19.8 ohms. And this reads 21.3 ohms. So still, that should be with, well within the range of tolerances that you're going to need for this sort of meter here. So now if we push the button, we'll try the continuity testing. This I find to be the most useful feature, right? So you put the probes together and it beeps if there's continuity there. So we have this nice block of aluminum. I'll tell you that there's continuity there. And that works as you would expect. And one of the most useful features I find of a meter like this. Let's try capacitance next. Now capacitance is a little different. This meter has a limit of 1,000 microfarads, so if you try to measure the capacitance of a capacitor that's over that level, it's not going to read it. And unfortunately, it doesn't give you any sort of error message or anything. It just doesn't read anything, so you, that can trick you up a little bit. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a big, giant capacitor. This is a motor star capacitor. It's, I think it's rated for 250 volts, something like that, and, but it's only 250 microfarads. This, on the other hand, comes out of a TV and it's 3,300 microfarads, although it's only rated for 16 volts. So it's a lot smaller, but has a lot higher capacitance due to the voltage difference. So size is not necessarily a good indication of the amount of capacitance in a capacitor, and so that can kind of trip you up sometimes. You may think that, oh, this is just a small little capacitor, it'll measure that just fine. Um, you gotta be aware of what the limit of the meter is, which is 1,000 microfarads. Now that is plenty to measure most of your motor start capacitors, which is what I you know, am generally checking to see if they're good or not. And you can see with this one here, get the probes on there right, reads 257 microfarads. So that's right in the range of this uh, capacitor here. So that's pretty good. Now I'd like to open this up, see what the insides look like, see if that looks like it's of high quality as well. So there's just four screws at the back. Incidentally, you don't have to actually even take the batteries out to open it up here.
taking this apart, we can see that it is really nicely made. First off, the way the two clamshells go together, normally if you've got like some box like this, some little electronics box, you're just going to take two clamshells, squish them together, and that'll be your box with just the edge kind of mating up as it is. You may go a little fancier, put a little lip on it so that you know that those uh, two surfaces are lined up properly. But what Fluke has done is they've gone even a step further. They've put a little groove in here and the top clamshell actually sits inside that groove. So the mating piece of plastic is never seen, it's never felt. You're never gonna you know, move your hand over it and catch it on kind of a sharp uh, edge from the edge of the mold or anything. That's all buried inside here. It's a much more expensive way to do things, making a mold for this half with this groove in it and everything. It's very expensive um, and the tolerances need to be a lot tighter on when you do that. The board also looks of similarly high quality. It says Fluke on it, so I'm pretty sure this is a genuine Fluke product here. And all the components look really nice. All the soldering job looks really well done. There's some nice dielectric grease around the little uh, selector here. All looks really nicely done and of really high quality. Lastly, let's measure the hertz here, the cycles per second of how quickly an AC voltage is changing. Um, I've never actually used this in practice. I believe it's used if you wanna to check to see how a generator is doing, if it's overloaded or something like that. The first thing that goes bad is the, the cycles per second or if the grid is having problems, it'll drop from you know nice 60 cycles per second in the US down to you know 50 or 40 or something like that. And that's an indication that it's either overloaded or there's something else going wrong. So let's, once again, just power cord in the outlet. On the big meter here, we get 59.97, very healthy there. And on this one here, 59.9. So that seems to work perfectly well. I really like this meter. For $40, it's a fantastic deal. It's really nice and high quality. It's very nicely made. One thing I didn't mention when I was putting it back together, I noticed that the, the ports for the probes, the screws both have a lock washer and are Loctited in there. So that's really nice to see. You can see they went to a lot of trouble to really make this a nice, good meter that's going to last you a long time. The only things that it's missing that I would like, um, I really wish it had a light-up display. That's something that I like to have. And I do wish that it had a stand. You can see I've got it propped up on a block of aluminum here. And of course, I wish it had the, the nicer probes, the silicone probes, instead of these, these kind of basic ones. But the price point, you can't beat that. So like I said, right now, as of February 2024, it's on Amazon for 40 bucks. Highly recommend you go pick one of those up. It's a great deal. Um, there is some question of if it's a, a gray market, if it's really meant to be sold in the US or, or not, and if Fluke will support it if you're in the US, you know, if you have a warranty claim or not. But for the price, I would jump all over that. I don't think there's any problem. I would be happy, uh, very confident that this is gonna last a very long time. So I wouldn't be concerned about that at all. If you use one of these, let me know if you like it in the comments below, or if there's something that's missing that you think is uh, really important, let me know about that too. Otherwise, thanks for watching.